Welcome back everyone. You may notice something dramatically different from the last tornado video we had and this of course is going to be an update. We've acquired about 20,000 more life and this is mainly done through the Paragon tree which we will discuss later in the video. Without greater Aphex gear or even just a few pieces of it perhaps, you'll be able to push comfortably within tiers 80 to 90 so you can still get to a good place with this build regardless of how perfected your gear is. These massive increases to life of course are going to help your survivability, and at this point your damage output will become the limiting factor in how far you can push within the pit, so if you're looking to push over tier 100, you're going to need some things fine tuned and possibly some greater Aphex gear. I wish that wasn't the case, but that's just the reality of it. With damage output being the limiting factor as mentioned, I want to stress how much additional damage you do to crowd controlled enemies, so if you're looking to take down bosses effectively, you need to get them staggered and then deal massive amounts of damage to them in a burst window opportunity. So look to take advantage of that as you get more comfortable with the build. The skill tree has been rebalanced, so to speak, and we've moved some points around. This is going to help the overall effectiveness of the build, not just your survivability, but also increase your damage output as well. Damage output does not scale nearly as well as the survivability did. However, regardless, this is the setup we're going to use. We're going to go through this, so if you've never played a tornado build, or even if you're new, you should be able to learn something from this as well. First up, we're going to run Maul. This is going to be our basic ability. This is going to shift us into Werebear, and this will make more sense as we get further in the tree and you see some of those synergies. So keep that in mind that your basic attack is going to shift you into a bear. Have to put a second point somewhere. Enhance Maul happens to be really good. This will give us additional Fortify. This will add up, and we also get additional bonuses from being fortified, not only from the skill tree, but the Paragon tree as well. Placing five points in Tornado because it's a Tornado build and we of course want to scale the damage of this core ability as high as possible. Enhanced Tornado gives us a chance to spawn additional Tornadoes. Now we also get additional chance from the tempering on our weapon. You can actually reach over 100% of this so you can have two Tornadoes for every cast which is a significant increase to damage. Raging Tornadoes give you a 10% chance to make the enemy vulnerable for 3 seconds. We should be casting enough Tornadoes to keep the enemies vulnerable, at least when it matters. Like elite enemies, bosses, that kind of thing. We should be dealing the bonus damage to them for being vulnerable. One point in Heart of the Wild, this is just to allow access to Wild Impulses, which just allows our Tornadoes to deal additional damage at the cost of extra spirit. 3 points in Predatory Instinct for an additional 6% Critical Strike Chance. Critical Strike Chance is really important to this build as we'll regen Spirit from that, you'll see that in the Paragon Tree, and that'll also allow access to Iron Fur, where you can get additional damage reduction when in Werebear form. This bonus also persists for 3 seconds after, meaning when we Maul, in case we need to generate Spirit or simply just want to shift for some of the bonuses it provides, we can use Maul, as mentioned, and then we'll get a damage reduction, and then we can cast our Tornado. This is going to again increase our survivability. But as we'll see later, being a werebear is also going to increase our damage output. You'll see that the 10 ranks in Digita Grade Gate are actually all from item contribution. So we don't actually place a point here manually. We're going to gain all these through our items, tampering, and so forth. So just be aware of that. But in general, the skill is going to increase our movement speed when in werewolf form. Every time we cast a tornado or even blood howl, which we'll take, you'll then be able to use that movement speed. A single point in Blood Howl will give you an incredible heal. This is far better than your potion. And on top of that, the cooldown is reduced by one second every time you kill an enemy. And it's going to increase your attack speed. The more attack speed you have, the more tornado damage you'll deal. The reduced cooldown on this is really effective as well. When you go into packs, you can use the Blood Howl, clear out a whole bunch of trash, and immediately that cooldown will be back. Incredibly useful ability. You'll be picking up Ancestral Fortitude, whether you use one point just as a pass-through to get Vigilance for the 15% damage reduction, or if you place two or even three points here, totally up to you and your character, and depending on how much additional resistance you use. In the example here, we're using two points in order to keep ourselves capped. We'll be running the Companions as buffs, so this is a pretty typical setup for that. One point into the Wolves, one point into the Poison Creeper, one point into the Ravens, and you're going to go down and unlock the Brutal Ravens. This will give you a number of Companions that you can benefit from Shepherd's Aspect and also Aspect of the Stampede, which we'll get to when we cover the gear. But in general, you're not necessarily casting these. Occasionally, you may use the Ravens in order to get increased Critical Strike Chance just because it's so good for this build. But other than that, you'll just keep these on the bar. A single point in Neurotoxin, a single point in Toxic Claws, this means poisoned enemies will be slowed, and critical strikes from Werewolf skills, which will count our Tornado with this particular build, are going to deal poisoning damage. And that essentially just means every critical strike chance slows the enemy, and you can benefit off of crowd control effects. We're going to put three points in Venom, and then look to pick up as much as you can from your item contribution as well. You can get a massive multiplicative damage increase from this skill. This build does not use an ultimate skill, but it uses a number of passive abilities down within that section of the tree. Three points in Defiance is going to give us a multiplicative damage increase versus Elites for the Tornado. Circle Life is going to give us some self-healing. 
Natural Disaster is going to allow us to do increased damage to stunned, immobilized, or knockback. This is more of that additional crowd control damage. Resonance will do additional multiplicative damage. This will be where you take or adjust points if you need to increase your resistances. So if you need an extra point, you can remove one here and then place it back up in Ancestral Fortitude. If you only need a single point here, just remove one, use it as a pass through, and place the other one to cap resonance. Three points into Quick Shift. Whenever you shape shift into a new animal form, you're gonna get a stacking damage buff. So we can maul, we can cast Tornado, we can maul, we can use Blood Howl. All of these shifts are gonna allow you to stack this bonus, and this adds up to a lot of damage. You can easily keep these stacks capped at all times. Heightened Senses works exactly the same way when you shift into new animal forms, but it provides different effects. For Werebear, you can get 6% damage reduction, and Werewolf, you'll get 6% movement speed. You should easily be able to maintain both of these, which means that the effects are actually doubled, so you're getting 12% of each of those. Natural Fortitude, shapeshifting fortifies you for 6% of your maximum life. We already have Fortify gain from Maul, so you're getting a large portion of this, and you should be able to keep your Fortify up, adding to the survivability pretty dramatically. And on top of that, we're going to get bonus damage through our Aspects and the Paragon Tree. For key passive, we're running Bestial Rampage. You can arguably take Ursine Strength, whatever you have for a preference. What it comes down to here is Ursine Strength will be a little bit additional survivability, which will help you if you're just kind of farming. If you're looking to push as high as possible, Bestial Rampage will be more damage output. So if you can avoid the boss mechanics, stay alive, getting the additional damage will allow you to push further. If you just kind of want to coast, then there's nothing wrong with Ursine Strength. Bestial Rampage, you're going to get an attack speed buff for 15 seconds after being a werewolf for 2 seconds. So when you're spamming some tornadoes on a stunned enemy, you're going to get that bonus. When you're aware bear for two seconds, you'll get a large multiplicative damage increase. This is really useful because as you're running around avoiding damage, you can just hit maul. And you can stay active in the wear bear form and then go back onto the boss with a large damage buff. Spear boons are pretty standard here at this point for druids. 15% reduced damage from elites. This is through wariness, pretty much a staple of all the druid builds in terms of ones that are pushing. Iron feather for 14% maximum life. Avian Wrath for 30% critical strike damage. If for some reason survivability is not an issue whatsoever, you can swap out Iron Feather and take Seath Talons. This will give you a large increase to critical strike chance. For the Wolf, we're running Energize. This will cause damage to have a 15% chance to restore spirit. We're casting so many tornadoes, this should be proccing fairly frequently. When the boss is staggered, you can just lay damage into it. Finally, we'll take Masochistic. This is just the best talent that's available for this particular build. It doesn't add up to quite as much healing as Circle of Life does. But regardless, there's really nothing else that you would take here. We'll be running two unique items with this build. And we may as well cover those first since they're in the first two slots. And then we'll cover the legendary aspects. Tempest Roar. This is going to get your base storm skills to also be werewolf skills. This is the entire reason we run that. The affixes on this piece are pretty irrelevant after that fact. So what we're looking to do here is just cause Tornado to be a werewolf skill. Mad Wolf's Glee is going to add three ranks to all werewolf skills. That means we're now going to get plus three ranks to our tornado. We also get additional ranks to Blood Howl, which, as mentioned, is just an incredibly good heal since it's instant, far better than your potion. The gem slots for all of your armor pieces will be rubies. This is going to help push your life and increase your survivability. And essentially, both these uniques are just taken for those special properties that they have. The affixes are somewhat irrelevant. Although Mad Wolf's Glee does have some decent affixes on the piece itself, maximum life, movement speed, damage reduction from poisoned enemies, all of these of course are good for the character, but again that property is really effective in terms of boosting our damage output. First up for legendary aspects will be Storm Chaser's aspect that's going to substantially increase your damage that the tornadoes deal in terms of AoE since it will now seek additional targets. What you're looking for in the gloves here in the first line is actually tornado ranks or even core skills if you can't find that. This pair of gloves is actually the only piece I have that doesn't have perfect affixes rolled. I had a pair that was favorited and somehow managed to vendor it off. So I'm still looking to replace that, but just ignore that willpower line that should be tornado or core skills at worst. Attack speed and critical strike chance are gonna be the next two things you're looking for. For tempering properties, you definitely want damage to close enemies, and you want a chance to stun, immobilize, or even freeze for the second property. Aspect of might on the pants, and you're gonna be looking for willpower, maximum life, armor and total armor on the tempering followed by again stun freeze or immobilize for the second tempering there's a little bit of leeway in terms of the armor rolls whether that be your total armor or even just the flat armor value that this provides but make sure that you're over that 9230 armor required to get the maximum reduction have a little bit of leeway as you level your pieces up through the master working process aspect of metamorphosis in the boot slot I prefer to have plus maximum evade charges. This is really useful on some of the bosses for the mechanics. 
Having the ability to evade more than once instantly can actually keep your character alive. Ideally, you'll have that as the implicit. For affixes, you're looking for maximum life, spirit per second, and movement speed. And on the tempering, again, we're looking for freeze, stun, immobilize, and then finally, we're looking for ranks of digitigrade gate. This aspect is run in order to give our character an unstoppable. We don't have one otherwise, so having those additional maximum evade charges can essentially keep your character alive, not just for the added mobility it has, since Metamorphosis works as a teleport of sorts, but just the ability to do it more than once and reposition very quickly. In the weapon slot, you're looking for a staff. You can run any weapon, but if you're looking to push, you specifically want a staff for the implicit, where you get additional damage to crowd-controlled enemies. Can't stress it enough, but you do so much damage to crowd-controlled enemies, this is where you're looking to burst targets down. For affixes on the weapon, you're going to want willpower and maximum life. The third affix is somewhat flexible. I'm running plus damage here, and I actually prefer that, but you can use resource cost reduction as well. In fact, you can even run critical strike damage since you have such a high critical strike chance. It's a little subjective to your character. Find which one you like best or whichever one you can, if that's the situation. So ultimately, a little bit of flexibility there. Damage to close enemies and chance for tornado projectiles to cast twice are basically mandatory for the tempering. So you may brick some items if you're unable to roll that. But again, your weapon choice is flexible unless you're pushing at the extreme levels. If you happen to want to run a one-hander and an offhand, you can run Shepard's Aspect on the weapon, and on the offhand, you can run Accelerating Aspect. This will actually be a unique combination that does some decent damage as well, but I would definitely recommend the two-hand option if you have the access to it. Aspect of Retaliation in the next slot. This can allow core skills to deal increased multiplicative damage based on your Fortify. We have a number of ways of generating Fortify within the build, as we talked about within the skill tree. So you should be able to take advantage of that. And again, the Fortify is just increasing your survivability. So getting both things here, damage and survival. For affixes, this will likely be the most difficult piece to get in your collection. You're looking for attack speed, critical strike chance, and ranks to Envenom. After that, you're looking for damage to close enemies, and for the lucky hit, you have a number of options here. I prefer the chance to restore primary resource, but if you can't get that, that's fairly flexible. If you have everything else covered in the next slot, I would just use the item regardless of what the second tempering roll is. In the first ring slot, we'll run Aspect of the Change into Debt. This is going to deal increased damage while you hit a poisoned enemy as a werebear. It's nice, our mall damage is somewhat irrelevant, but we deal increased damage if they're crowd controlled as a werewolf. And this is again another way we're stacking this. Second slot will be Aspect of Stampede. We talked about this combo earlier. Shepherd's Aspect and Aspect of Stampede are pretty much always paired together. This just allows you to use your companions as buff sources and just capitalize on that. In this case, we get additional companions. The companion skills dealing extra damage are relevant for the build, but what it does do is allow our core and wrath skills to deal additional damage per companion that we have, which is what we placed on our weapon. On both rings, you're going to want the exact same thing, so you're looking to have maximum life, attack speed, and critical strike chance. And then on the tempering line, you want to make sure that you have damage to close enemies. For the second tempering, you're going to want resource cost reduction on both rings. In this case, I did not roll one perfectly, it just happens to be any other piece that I have. But I just want to make sure that you're aware the second line you want is the resource cost reduction. Now we arrive at the Paragon Tree, you of course can find this information in the link in the video description. We'll cover the glyphs and even the legendary traits that we're picking up here. We've gained massive increases to our survivability through this tree, but something had to go, right? We can't just have everything within the tree. We do lose a little bit of damage with this setup, but the trade-off for that 20,000 extra life is far worth it. In the starting board, we're going to run Territorial. Essentially, we're running this for the 10% damage reduction against close enemies. The additional damage you do to close targets is helpful as well, but it's not multiplicative. So that damage reduction is really the reason. The second board is Thunderstruck. We're going to get a massive multiplicative damage increase. Here, I've got 163, and it has the ability to push this up closer to 200 as well. So depending on your rolls and your luck, you may even get a higher bonus. Just absolutely massive to your damage output. For the glyph here, running Spirit, critical strikes are going to increase the damage an enemy takes from you up to multiplicative 12%. We have a very high critical strike chance. You should be over 50%. So this is going to stack up really quickly with the number of tornadoes you cast. And overall, just be a massive buff. Nice factor here is that you also get increased critical strike damage. Such a high critical strike chance that, of course, is useful. The third board will be Heightened Malice, and we'll do the loop around. You're most likely seen this if you've been playing Druid for some time. You'll pass through for the glyph and come back on the other end. Heightened Malice is going to allow you to do 45% multiplicative damage while you have three or more poisoned enemies. A lot of the bosses even summon adds, so you can capitalize on that during the boss encounters as well. But for trash, this is pretty invaluable. 
Fang and Claw. This is going to give us a 12% multiplicative damage increase while we're in Werewolf or Werebear form. That's when we're going to be dealing our damage, so just a damage boost as well. We'll pass through the Constricting Tendrils board without taking the Legendary Node itself. This will give us access to a Glyph slot. We're going to place Keeper here. You can get a bonus to the rare nodes within range. This includes 10% maximum life, which is very nice. On top of that, we're going to do 10% multiplicative damage to non-physical sources. So this is going to include our tornado, so a massive boost to health and to damage. Next, we'll pick up Lust for Carnage. Critical Strikes with Werewolf Skills, which includes Tornado, will restore two Spirit. We're going to get tons of Spirit back from this because the critical strike chance is so high. So you're going to be spamming Tornadoes and just restoring your Spirit at the same time. This is what allows you to get that burst on the bosses. In the Glyph slot, we're going to place Undaunted. You can gain up to 10% damage reduction the more Fortify you have. What's interesting about the pit is that you may often be at full health, full fortify or basically dead so you're going to get all or nothing from this so we obviously want to have full health and full fortify but we'll capitalize on this just to add some increased survivability the next board is ancestral guidance and this is where we had to give something back we're unable to get enough points in order to take this so we're losing out on 30 percent multiplicative damage for five seconds after we spend 75 spirit but between the other legendary nodes that we do have you should still have enough damage Thunderstruck is providing a much larger multiplicative damage boost and even heightened malice provides a little bit more when there's three or more enemies and it's far more consistent to proc, especially on the trash. For the final glyph, we'll take Werewolf. We're going to get 10% damage reduction while in Werewolf form and we also get increased damage output while in Werewolf form, a perfect combination since we'll be spamming Tornado more than anything else. I hope you're continuing to enjoy this season and getting the most out of your Druid. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.